Tua Tungavaloa didn't have to do anything. It was like he didn't play. And then when you told me you guys were going to ask me this and I had 45 seconds to talk about Tua, I had to try to figure out something to say because he ain't do nothing. <laughs> Maybe we'll see it going forward. But as far as yesterday, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, what you did do, though, was you set up the conversation perfectly when you said the phrase, we got to see what he can do. I hope everyone saw Adam Schefter's very interesting report coming out of Miami yesterday, because I will remind you, of those who don't know, that the Dolphins have Houston's first-round pick this coming season. The Texans have one win, which suggests they could wind up being in the market at the top of the draft for some of these really big quarterbacks who will be coming out, maybe Trevor Lawrence, maybe Justin Fields. And so Schefter reported that one of the reasons, part of the thinking of getting two on the field as they did was that they need to evaluate whether or not they have their quarterback of the future before they can make up their mind what they want to do in the draft. Dan, what do you think of that strategy? Yeah, you don't evaluate your quarterback when you have a playoff football team. I mean, that's what the Dolphins are as a playoff caliber football team. So you should not be in the thought process of evaluating a young player. I'll sit here and say this, Greedy. If, if you told me Ryan Fitzpatrick was still the Dolphins starting quarterback today, I would pick them to win the AFC East. I've been that impressed with them over the last month, especially on the defensive side. They're that good of a team. And so I, don't, I just can't connect the dots on that thought process for the Miami Dolphins organization. You're good enough to go win that division. The division is weak in 50% in of it. You're good enough to go win the division. Don't bench a guy who's playing really good football that can go take you to the playoffs to evaluate to a tongue of ILO at the quarterback spot. Rex. Well, first off, I would say this. What if Justin Herbert was your quarterback? How would you feel now? I might, you pick, think I might pick him to be the one seed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Okay, so to me, <laughs> here's what I know, okay? And it's fascinating, unbelievable by, by Adam Schefter, the best by far, okay? Because when I looked at it this way, I just know there's one quarterback on their roster that's not going to take me to a, to a playoff, and that's Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'm sorry, 16 years a pretty big resume. I don't care that he's had a couple of hot games. To me, Tua, you drafted him fifth overall. Why? Because you know Ryan Fitzpatrick can't get it done. So I'm not going to question Brian Flores at all. And Ryan Clark, you know, talks about this defense. I agree with him. Brian Flores doing a great job. So let's trust that he's trying to evaluate this kid. I mean, not necessarily trying to evaluate. He's trying to win right now with, with Tua. Are, are we concerned because he's... He's so short, and he's got maybe a, a possible hip injury, and there's durability questions about him. Then why the hell did we draft him? That was what, why I said it was the biggest gamble in the, the history of the NFL draft, and I still see it, but I'm still pulling for the kid at the same time. Well, so, RC, I mean, it, it could be an example, if, if this is really the primary part of the thinking, of an organization putting the organization ahead of the team. And that's an interesting thing to do at a point, as Dan just said, where the team looks pretty good and the division looks gettable. Yeah, but I, I feel like I feel like they've been I feel like they've been doing that since Brian Flores became the coach. You know, we, we looked at them stockpiling picks, giving away good players, and then Ryan Fitzpatrick and Brian Flores find ways to win games. And then now this season, this Josh Poyer defense is amazing. This defense can win playoff games today. Right. When Byron Jones is healthy, when Xavier Howard is right, they can win games today. And so if you can win games with this defense right now, but your quarterback can't win you a playoff game, but your quarterback can't play you into a playoff game, which it doesn't, they don't know if Tua Tagovailoa can, then you don't make this choice. This is not a winner's choice to make a draft pick and now be questioning that draft pick if the reports are true and now be questioning that draft pick so much that you just have to throw him out there so you can see him in live action just to know that he can do it. Listen, two wrongs don't make a right. Three right. lefts, like they just, they just don't. Two wrongs don't make a right. So trying to correct a missed draft or a, a, a bad draft pick by allowing, by, by allowing your team to fail is not the way to fix it. If you think you're wrong, go ahead and be wrong and use that pick going forward. But don't hurt the men on this team right now, the coaches on this coaching staff that has done such a great job by trying to fill out a quarterback when you have a team that's ready to win everywhere else right now.
Especially since you don't have any control over what Houston does. You really right. can't control where you wind up drafting in this. But I feel someone should say this. I mean, there were people talking about Tua like he was going to be the best player no, right. in the this league. Is, uh, this isn't for me a talent thing about Tua. I think Tua is going to be a great pro. It talked, it, this is for me about the now. Like right now, you have a team that can go win your division. And Tua, like there were some moments yesterday, he takes a deep shot downfield to Kasicki, one on one ball, gets it broken up, he gets the ball driven to the sideline, the touchdown. Like there's moments, sure, but there's nothing that made me sad to sit there and go, oh. You know, like I did with Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow. When I watched them play this year, I go, the other oh, thing, you know, go ahead, RC. Yeah, but the, the, the other thing, too, though, the other thing, too, though, Dan, is I think we all had convinced ourselves that even though Fitzpatrick was playing the way he did, that Tua had done so much at practice, they'd seen so much from him that he earned this opportunity to play, that it wasn't about filling out, that it wasn't about anything else, but Tua Tungvaloa is ready to go, and we are going to let him rip. With these reports and with the way that I watched them play football yesterday, that's not what they're doing. Correct. Yeah. And so to me, I don't think you do that to a team that is working hard, that is competing hard, that has put you in a position where you have an opportunity to win the AFC East. You don't set that team back trying to see what you can do two years or three years down the line. Super quick final thought. The thing that I was told was that he has a much higher ceiling than Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right. So, guys, as the year's going on, we're going to see him get better and better, and that's what you want to do. You want to peak during that time in December. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.